All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about my favorite subject, and that's understanding big bass and how to catch more big bass. And I can assure you, if you watch this entire video, you should learn some tips that will help you in a quest for a trophy. And ever since I was a young kid, it's always been an obsession of mine to catch big fish. And even on my birthday parties, when I, I can still remember when I was seven years old, when you make a wish before you blow out the candles, I would always wish to catch a 10-pound bass. And back then, with sports and everything, I didn't have that many opportunities to go fishing. But I loved to fish, and about once or twice a year, I would hook into a nice trophy-sized fish, you know, seven-pound fish. And sometimes I'd catch them, sometimes I'd lose them, but... I would sit there and replay, you know, all the details back in my mind on what did I do to get that bite? Why did I miss it? You know, what was the weather? What was I using? You know, and I would analyze it so much and try to learn and pick up every little detail that I could just so that I could, you know, get bites more frequently and hopefully catch that fish that I missed the next time. So as the years went along, I'd get more and more bites and I'd pick up on small little traits that big fish, you know, tend to have in common and it would put me in better situations to catch those fish and to get more bites. And then nowadays, you know, Liz and I can go out and consistently catch big fish, but I'm telling you there's a mentality that you have to have when you're searching for big fish and it's completely different than when you're searching, you know, when you're out fun fishing or when you're tournament fishing, you know, big bass fishing is a type of fishing in itself and you have to have a mindset to do it so we're going to go over some of the things that i think will help you guys you know as you seek out a big bass so we're going to start off by talking about common mistakes that every angler makes when it comes to catching big bass and the number one issue that i see with anglers is noise and if you think about it so imagine you're sitting you know in your bed at night and you hear someone you know, come in through the door or in your living room, you're immediately alarmed. And at that point, you're not, there's no way you would eat food when you're alarmed. You know, when you get in an alarmed state, it's almost impossible to even think about eating food. And it's the same way with a big bass. And when, when they hear your trolling motor or when they hear you talking, they're in an alarm state and there's no way that they're going to eat at that moment because the big fish, you know, are, have gotten big. Most likely they've been caught whenever they were younger and they associate sounds from humans, trolling motors, uh, boat motors. They associate all of that with harm or with an alarming state. And once they hear you, there's almost no chance that you're going to catch them. So I'm going to give you a few tips that are going to help you not spook the fish before you even get the opportunity to catch them. Number one, when you're out trophy fishing, you should never run your trolling motor on high run it you know it takes a lot longer to get to where you're going put it on low speed and ease around the lake number two i used to catch a lot more big bass whenever i was fishing alone for the sole fact that you know you don't you weren't talking to somebody it's you know easy for a couple fishermen to, to be in a boat and just carrying on and talking and I noticed that as I was fishing alone, I'd catch a lot more big bass. So, you know, Liz and I try to keep our voices, you know, down to a minimum. And it's funny, I get a lot of comments that of people that think I'm not excited after I catch a big bass. And we're extremely excited. Like, it's my goal, you know, it's the thing that I that I've searched for the most throughout a year and I'm extremely excited but again you have to get in a mindset of no noise and even after you catch a big fish I'm extremely excited but I'll celebrate you know after I get off the lake and the fishing day's over because once I get in a big bass mode if I catch a 10 pounder that means there's a good chance that the conditions are perfect and I'm looking to get that next 10 pounder to bite as well so remember keep your voices to a minimum keep your trolling motors to a minimum and that'll help you now another thing is if you're fishing on you know out of a bass boat and you have a you know a big motor that you're running this goes for tournament anglers as well you know don't drive your main you know your big motor up directly over the top of the spot you're going to fish you know drive it up close enough get on that trolling motor and then ease up to where you're going to fish because once they hear you coming in with that big motor it's going to be there's not a really good chance you're going to catch those really big bass all right now another big tip that i'll give you that has helped me tremendously in catching more big fish is the reel that you use you need a reel that can cast the furthest amount of distance you know and because that's going to help you eliminate some of that noise you know the further you can throw the more distance between you and the fish and the less likely they are to hear you 
So uh, having a good reel as a, as a key, you know, to getting the, making those long casts and presenting a bait to a fish before they ever hear you in its natural state, and that'll give you a good advantage. And we'll kind of go back to my childhood for one more second. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, idolize fishermen like KVD, and don't get me wrong, I love KVD and watching him, you know, in tournaments and that sort of thing. But when I was a kid, I was always extremely interested in those people who had figured the big bass out, like the bass professor Doug Hannon. And there's also one other guy I'd like to introduce a lot of you to that I'm sure you haven't ever heard of him. His name is Pat Cullen. And he caught, at one point, he caught 1100 bass that were over 10 pounds and this guy just amazed me i'd study as much stuff as i could read about him his techniques were extremely different than everybody else's he would almost primarily fish at night in a boat by himself and fish black buzz baits and he had a perfect technique he was extremely detailed oriented he'd wash his hands before every trip that way he didn't get a scent on the baits there's a lot of cool information that you know we could go over from him, but I'll leave a link to some of the articles from Pat, you know, that I've read in the past that I found really interesting. And I recommend you reading them because this is a very educated guy when it comes to catching big bass. He may have caught more big bass than anybody. So he's definitely a good source to pick up some extra tips outside of this video. So now we're going to go back to the mentality that you have to have whenever you're searching for these big fish. So before you even get to the water, you, you almost have to make up your mind, am I looking for big fish or am I looking to fun fish or tournament fish or, you know, whatever, just a relaxing day. Because if you're looking to catch trophy fish, there's certain things you need to do. There's certain tactics you need to have, equipment you need to have, that mentality that I talk about. And so we'll talk about some equipment and some baits that I recommend. So as far as equipment, you know, the all you need is a good, you know, strong rod. The rod's not nearly as important as the reel. The line is very important in the fact that you don't want to use light line. When you're fishing for these big fish, you need 17-pound test or higher or braided line. But I like to stick with around 17-pound strand. That's what my key has been to catching a lot of big fish over the years. It's strong enough to hold up in case they, you know, wrap it around a log. And yet it's still clear enough to get that bite. So now we're going to talk about some of the baits that I like to use. And if you've watched our videos over the past couple years, you've seen Liz and I use a 12-inch June bug worm more times than I can count. And it's because that's a really good bait for big fish, and there's a couple of reasons. So these big fish are what I call lazy. They like to sit down there on the bottom, not waste any energy. That's how they get so big. They consume more food and waste less energy, and that's what allows them to get to that trophy size. So a lot of times they're sitting down there, usually around a hump or around a piece of structure that gives them a good advantage point whenever that bait presents itself. Well, the big worm is a perfect style bait for this because it moves really slow and it's long and slender. And that's almost one of the keys to catching big fish. You need long, slender baits. And that worm just tends to work out perfect. So another good bait, is, as we mentioned Pat uses all the time, is a buzz bait. And there's a couple reasons I love using a buzz bait for big fish. And for one, you know, it's moving along so fast on the surface, the fish doesn't really have a good opportunity to look at it and to see any flaws in it or see that it's not, you know, a real live bait moving across the surface. And that's actually what I caught my personal best bass of 13 pounds, one ounce on a white buzz bait. So a buzz bait's a really good choice. It moves across the surface and you know creates a little bit of disturbance but not too much and then it's enough to get their attention and kind of hidden enough through the bubbles and the noise to where they can't really make out what it is or see any flaws and a black buzz bait at night is a killer bait for big bass and then one last bait i'd like to talk about are big swim baits and these are really popular out on the west coast but they work everywhere and it's it goes back to that mentality once you tie on a lure that that is that big and that heavy you just have to be in that right state of mind because you're probably only going to get a couple bites at most in a day but those bites are going to be the fish that you're looking for so big swim baits fishing them slow and those fish will see that bait and they'll know that it's enough meal to commit to it and uh, come up and eat it. So 
So those are a couple of my favorite big bass baits. There's several more that I have. We won't spend all day talking about lures. The one thing I will say, when you're searching for big fish, you need to upsize your baits. You know, don't use those smaller worms you know avoid you know four inch six inch worms use something really big because that fish isn't going to commit to eating if it's not going to provide him enough fuel so they look for those big meals and one other thing i want to point out about trophy sized bass is that they're loners you're not going to see a school of 10 pounders out you know running around together chasing bait big fish are tend to be isolated to themselves you know, they'll sit around a hump or they'll sit near bait and near other fish and possibly feed off of the wounded shad that come down from under a bait ball. But they're usually going to be loners, so you're not necessarily going to go out and expect to catch a school of fish when you're doing that trophy style fishing. You're looking for those one or two bites that are going to be really rewarding. And the last thing I want to talk about with equipment is just make sure to set your drag. I mean, that's the one thing you don't want to do is have a drag that's too tight you hook up to a 10 pounder and then they make a run whenever they see you or see the boat and the drag set too tight and your line ends up snapping. So always make sure you got that drag set. So now I want to talk about the weather a little bit. And if you didn't get a chance to see my previous video that I put out on how the weather affects bass fishing, I'll also put a link below and it goes into extreme detail on, you know, the times you should be fishing. But I'd like to mention a couple things about the time of day and the weather when you're fishing for big bass. And to start off with, I'll say that low light conditions are always the best, and that's because your lures always have flaws, whether it be, you know, the hook sticks out too much or that they can see the line or that, you know, there's a flaw in the bait. And if you're fishing in low light situations, it doesn't allow that big fish to see those flaws in the bait. And a lot of times they'll just see silhouettes and they won't get to see the full detail of the bait and they'll commit to it a lot more. And it's not necessarily that they eat that much more in low light, it's that they can't see the flaws in your bait. So low light's always good and that's gonna be first thing in the morning, all through the night, and last thing in the evening. And one other great condition is gonna be on cloudy and rainy days. And we've had a lot of good success fishing for big fish out in the rain and usually it's pre-front you know there's a rain coming there's a storm rolling in and that pressure's dropping so those conditions are perfect for getting those big fish to bite because they're going to start eating whenever that pressure starts dropping right before a storm they start eating and you'll have a lot more opportunity to catch those big fish and now the reason that i waited to put this video out you know here in november is because now is the time that i start getting in that big fish mentality state of mind because from november to march is when the fish are going to be the biggest that they are all year long and that's when you need to be on your hunt for a trophy so i like to start fishing you know those big style baits right now fishing deeper water looking for those fish that have fattened up for the winter and usually february is key here in the south february is when the fish are at their peak they got the, the most weight on them they've also got eggs that they haven't spawned yet so february is a really good month to get out and catch a trophy so just to kind of recap some of the things we've talked about before you even make it out on the water get in that big bass state of mind you know, get your bait set up properly, have everything ready to go. When you get on the water, keep your noise levels down to a minimum. Fish during the peak times to where you think that you can get those big fish to commit. And don't be discouraged if you don't get that big fish. You know, it's it's sometimes it's a challenge. You know, I may go several trips and not even get a bite because I was just trophy fishing. But that's all right because whenever you do get that bite and you catch that big fish, it's so rewarding. So... You know, it's a challenge to do it, but it's one of the best challenges, in my opinion, that there ever was in sporting. And that trophy bass, you know, it's been a passion of mine since I was a kid, and I still enjoy catching big bass as much to this day. So once you start learning, you know, and picking up on tips as you're out on the water on what your fish are doing, you know, once you put all the clues together, you'll start catching more big bass. And I don't want to overload you guys with too many tips. If you like this style of video, I can continue on giving you tips. I feel like I've got a lifetime of lessons that I've had to learn the hard way. And if you want to hear more of them, I'll be happy to make more videos like this with more tips and techniques and things I think you should do. But these were the keys that I think, you know, are just the basics that will help all of you guys catch bigger fish. And just look at it like this. You know, most of the time when you go fishing, at some point in that fishing trip, you're putting your lure in front of a big fish. 
And now you may be not getting it to bite. You know, maybe you did get it to bite, but just always remember, you're going to have those opportunities. That bait is going to flutter down there in front of that trophy fish. So just keep that in mind. Keep fishing hard. Get in that big bass state of mind, and I think you'll have some success. So leave me some feedback below in this video and let me know if it helped you out. And also send me pictures, you guys, if you catch a trophy and if this helps you out and you... You go out and catch some big fish, send me pictures and photos, and we'll share them on our social media site. So good luck with your quest to catch a trophy, and we wish you all the best.